Worship is all about thanking God and telling him that you love him. You appreciate him. God wants to be appreciated. All the wonderful things he's done for us in this life, the things he's doing behind the scenes, the mighty things God has done, is doing, and will do. We are just so blessed. We are just so blessed. So we thank God for what he has done. Thank God for what he's doing. And thank God for what he's going to do. Thank God for all of you out there. Uh, praise God. We thank God. Uh, David Carter was on with us last week from Dubai, all the way across the world in the nation of Dubai. And he was on live with us. David might be on with us again today. I see my son, Wes. Uh, praise God. Man, that, that's a, what a wonderful guy. My son, Wes. I see Christy Carpenter. Carpenter, Ryan Trogler, Linda Barrett. I see so many of you, and I just thank God for you. I love you all. I thank God for what he's doing in your lives. I thank God for so many people. I see Marisol is there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I know some of you are listening while you're at work. That's good. That's good. Keep on doing your job. Save your job now. Some of you, we, we've got one. He's a trucker. Man, he listens up and down the highway and, and is trucking for Jesus. And God is reaching people in a variety of ways because he loves you and he's got a plan for your life. Well, I pray that your family is doing way well. We're hearing about miracles and healings. God wants to heal. God wants to perform miracles. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He will do for you. Put your trust in him. Don't worry about what your circumstance or your situation is all about. Turn it over to Jesus. The word of God says, and when the enemy comes upon us like a flood, the spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. When the enemy comes upon you, whether it's attacking your finances, attacking your marriage, attacking your body, whether it's with sickness or disease or whatever the situation, the Holy Spirit who lives in every believer, he rises up. That's what the scripture says. He rises up. He will raise up a standard against the enemy. So ladies and gentlemen, God does not want you walking in fear and being afraid. He wants you to know that he's got this. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what the situation is, God has got this. So put your trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's what the Bible says. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You might feel weak. You might feel sickly. You might be under attack. But the scripture says in Isaiah 40, 28 to 31, teaches us, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now that shall means it's going to happen. As you put your trust in the Lord and you're going through something, you just wait on him. Wait, wait, wait. How long shall I wait? Wait till he delivers. Well, when will he deliver? He does not often tell you when he's going to deliver, but he wants you to put your trust in him. Good morning, Tammy Nichols. Praise God. Tammy Nichols is waiting on the Lord. She's waiting on the Lord and ministering powerfully in the state of Ohio. And we just thank God for all of you. We're learning how to put our trust in the Lord. Facebook family, trust in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not your ordinary church. It's not a brick and mortar church, but it's an online church. It's an online church where we're reaching out. We're reaching out to the sick and shut-ins. We're reaching out to those who are incarcerated beyond prison walls. We're reaching out for those who have dropped out of the main line, mainstream church. There are a lot of disillusioned uh, people who just, they're just fed up with the okie doke. They just got sick and tired of religion. You know, religion stinks. It brings a, a, a terrible odor into our nostrils. Religion stinks. Religion stinks, you know, you got to have Women's Day, Men's Day, 
offering number one, offering number two. The plate goes around three times, four times, five times. I mean, the church is driving people crazy with offerings and begging for money and selling for selling tickets and having programs and this and that. People don't want that. They want to hear from God. Come on, somebody. People don't want to hear about the next uh, program, the next play, the next movie. Uh, pastor gets in the pulpit talking about a movie. Ladies and gentlemen, they want to hear from God. God and God wants to speak to his people. God can't speak to his people because he's got some of those knucklehead pastors who are trying to promote their programs, trying to stroke up uh, uh, the, the pastor's aid, trying to get money and this and that. Ladies and gentlemen, we here at the online church fear the Lord. We fear the Lord and we know that God does not want us to play with people's lives. God wants to reach out to people. He wants to change lives. He wants to reveal himself. He wants to uh, be right where you are. He wants you to know that he cares about you. That is why we have started the online church. This is our second year. We're not trying to raise up a whole lot of numbers of people or, 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 or boast about how many people like us or how many likes we get on Facebook or how many likes we get on our YouTube channel. No, no, we're trying to bring you the word of God to let you know that God cares about you. He's concerned about you right where you are today. He's been with you yesterday. He'll be with you today and he'll be with you tomorrow. And all he wants you to do is trust him. Trust him. Commit your life to him. Turn your life over to him. Receive his son, Jesus Christ, and let Jesus Christ live in you in the person of the Holy Spirit, which brings me up to my subject today. Hallelujah. This is a life changing series. We started this three weeks ago, and my subject today is what happens after you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? What happens after you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Let us pray. Let's, let's ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. We can't preach without the Holy Spirit. We cannot hear without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in charge of this program, and so we commit it to him. Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this beautiful new day, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you that we're still in the land of the living. Thank you that you have a plan for us. We worship you, adore you, and honor you, Lord God. There is no other God but you. And so we come boldly to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we have all sinned. We confess our sins. We have all sinned and come short of your glory. So Father, forgive us of our sins. You said if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now, Lord, I ask that you'll touch the hearts of the people. Help them to hear the word. Send the word through this preacher, God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, open the eyes and hearts of the people. Help them to receive Jesus as Savior and receive the Holy Spirit. Lord, we need you. Holy Spirit, we're so thankful that you've been sent by God to live in us, to indwell every believer. We cannot make it without you. We cannot. We've tried and we've failed. We cannot make it without you. So fill us today and again 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 every day, Holy Spirit. Fill us. We need you. Guide us. Take us by the hand and lead us. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. In the next 30 minutes, let's just talk about uh, what happens after you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, now that uh, topic presupposes that you have already received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but I know that there are many of you who have not yet received the baptism. Many of you are still thinking on it, contemplating. Many of you are desiring the Holy Spirit, but you have not yet received. Well, that's all right. Praise God. The scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord 
shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So if you have not yet received the Holy Spirit baptism, let's follow these teachings and let's get the word in us. Let's build a foundation of the word. And then uh, you then when when the when when you are ready, you just ask the Lord. We don't want you to wait till 19 uh, 2020 or 2025. We want you to get the Holy Spirit as soon as possible. You can be receive the baptism today. But first of all, let me just do some explaining. Not a whole lot of preaching, but I want to just do some teaching in the last three weeks. I've been ministering on the subject, the Holy Spirit baptism. And this whole series is under the umbrella of why every believer needs to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Why every believer needs to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, those words are synonymous. They refer to the third person of the Trinity. We worship God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Not three gods, but three persona, three persons in one under the Godhead. The scripture, the word is Elohim. Elohim, it's plural. So it encompasses the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The scripture says, in the beginning, God created. So God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost, God, the Godhead, created the heavens and the earth. God created you and me. He created us for a purpose. Psalm 139, 14 says that he created us so that we can worship him and praise him. That's your purpose, ladies and gentlemen, and that's my purpose. Not to make a whole lot of money, not to have our own business, not to have an empire, not to do this and not to do that. God created us for the purpose of worshiping him. And, and in our life, early in life, people get drawn off course. Many people are not born into Christian homes. They don't have uh, faith people to lead them and guide them. Many do not have parents to guide them in the Lord. Many never go to church. Many never hear the word of God. And then there are many who go to church, but they hear so much okie doke but they don't get the word of God and they don't get a connection with the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're looking at a nation, just the United States alone. 80% of Americans do not attend church. 80%, ladies and gentlemen, that's drastic. And I'm saying of that 80%, I hope most of them will come on to the online churches. Uh, line up with Pastor Paul Begley on the Pastor Paul Begley online church or other online churches, but don't just sit there and rot, ladies and gentlemen. Don't sit there and let the Satan separate you from the body of Christ. Don't just stay there and try to live your life separated from God. You'll be like what Ezekiel saw in, in the 37th chapter. He saw a valley of dry bones, the ankle bones here, the toe bones over there, the knee bones way over there, the arm bones over there, the neck bones there, the back bones there. These bones were separated and disconnected. And the Holy Spirit said to Ezekiel, these bones represent the whole house of Israel. In other words, to bring that down to the present, the dry bones scattered and separated, dry and dead, represent the church, ladies and gentlemen, represent the church. The Methodists teach this. The Episcopalians teach this. The Catholics teach this. The Lutherans teach this. The Pentecostals teach this. The Evangelicals teach this. And, 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 and everybody's teaching their own thing. And oftentimes they are not hearing from God. Many people are, are promoting their own programs, ladies and gentlemen. And so we see the church confused and scattered and dry and disconnected. And God wants the church to line up with his purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said in uh, uh, Matthew 16, 18 to 20, uh, he said he he asked Simon Peter, who do men say that I am? And and after they all said, well, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah or one of the prophets come back from the dead. He said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Christ. You're the Messiah. 
You're the son of the living God. And Jesus said to Simon Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. You didn't get that in school. You didn't get that at the daycare center. You didn't get that at, at Starbucks. You didn't get that at Walmart. You didn't get that at uh, uh, your favorite restaurant. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Hagios Numa, the breath of God, the Ruah, revealed that to you. God revealed that to you and said, and Simon Peter, on this rock, on the rock of your faith in me as the Messiah, the Son of God, I will build my church on the strength of this faith that people have in me. I will build my church. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is building the church, but Satan is unbuilding. He's destroying and he's separating people. He wants people to stay out of church. He wants people to remain dry bones. He wants people to walk in their own pride. The devil wants people to deny Jesus Christ. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Open up your eyes and see Jesus. He hung, bled, and died on the cross so that we might have eternal life. But what have we done to him? We have listened to grandmama. We have listened to mama. We've listened to Uncle Willie. We've listened to our boyfriend, our girlfriend. We've listened to some of those ignorant teachers in school. And we've listened to some of these dumb pastors who preach anything and everything, like dumb stuff like all roads lead to Jesus. And, and, and the church, ladies and gentlemen, now we have a church that's so scattered all over America, all over the nations. The same thing is happening in the world. My friends in Kenya will tell you the same thing. My friends in Guyana will tell you the same thing. My friends in India will tell you the same things. My friends in, in Europe will tell you the same things. People believe the lie. They would rather believe Satan's lies because they deny Jesus Christ. And look at Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. He's grieving. He hung, bled, and died on the cross for you, for me, for everyone, so that we might have the right to the tree of life. He offers us salvation and eternal life if we will only believe in him and put our trust in his death on the cross, in his burial, in his resurrection from the dead. But no, no, we would rather work things out because we're smart now. We're intelligent now. We have schools now. We have, we have uh, uh, model schools, model programs. We have scholarships. We have, we have uh, uh, all kinds of schools where we can learn this. We've got the internet. We can Google stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't need Jesus anymore because anything we want to know, we can Google it. Come on, somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, People are saying Jesus is old fashioned, but ladies and gentlemen, the time is going to come where you're going to wish, you're going to wish, you're going to wish that you had listened to the word of God. You're going to wish that you had stayed in the church. You're going to wish that you had gotten filled with the Holy Ghost because the time is coming and it's coming soon, ladies and gentlemen, where this same Jesus who died on the cross is going to get the word from his heavenly father. And his father says, it's going to say, go and get the church and bring the church home. Bring your bride home to me and introduce me to the bride so that we can have the wedding of you and your bride here in heaven. And Jesus is going to crack through the skies, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says the trump is going to sound and the dead in Christ, those faithful believers, not everybody who went to church and died is going to raise up. Let me say that again, ladies and gentlemen. Not everybody who died, who went to church and eventually died, is going to raise up because a lot of people go to church, but they don't know Jesus. A lot of people are in church buildings right now. They don't know Jesus. And so uh, the dead in Christ will rise. Only the believers will rise, ladies and gentlemen. And then the scripture says, those of us who remain, not everybody who's still on the earth, because everybody on the earth will not trust in Jesus. But believers like you and me, if we're still alive when he comes, we're going to be caught up with the dead in Christ to go into heaven to enjoy the marriage celebration where we, the church, would be married to Jesus Christ. We will become his bride and praise God, there'll be a great time in heaven. And then while we're in heaven, Jesus Christ is going to subdue 
the enemies of Christ here on the earth. So ladies and gentlemen, please, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, hear the gospel, read your Bible, believe the Bible, do what the Bible says. Now let's talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not tell, tell his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel just for naught. We find in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, the scripture says, the scripture says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. Mark 16 says a similar thing. Teach all nations this gospel. Don't teach them about uh, 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 soap operas and, and situation comedies and, 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 and uh, 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 reality shows and uh, uh, Black Panthers and uh, the movies. Uh, there's no edification in that. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing spiritual about the movies. And people would rather go to the movies and try to conjecture something spiritual. That's witchcraft, ladies and gentlemen. Star Wars. That's witchcraft, ladies and gentlemen. Star Wars, the return of the Jedi, the Empire strikes back, and the Force. And some people, because they went to the movies and saw Star Wars and talk about the Force, they think they're saved because they believe in the Force. Ladies and gentlemen, that will kill you and take you to hell. You must be born again. You must be born again, ladies and gentlemen. You must be born again. Facebook family, unless a man is born again, unless a woman is born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You may say, well, I go to the mosque. I'm a Muslim. I, I, I'm a Muslim. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be the best Muslim in the world, but there is no salvation in the Muslim religion. There's no salvation in Islam. Uh, Muhammad is not Jesus Christ. He did not raise from the dead. Muhammad is in hell right now burning. He will not rise again. You must be born again, ladies and gentlemen. You must receive the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not putting Muhammad down. I'm just preaching the gospel. I don't care if you did get angry with me. I don't care if you do get offended. It's the truth anyhow. Well, I'm a Buddhist. I believe in Buddha. I I, I, I follow Gautama Buddha. And, and well, there's no salvation in following the Buddha. Wake up, listen, open your eyes. Hear the gospel. Read the Bible. Well, I read the Quran, and the Quran is better than the Bible. No, 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 no fiddlesticks. It is not. It is not. The Bible is the only word of God. It is the only word of God. Amen. It is profitable for doctrine, for, for inspiration, for correction, and for reproof. Read the word of God, ladies and gentlemen. The Quran is not the Bible. The Sanskrit is not the Bible. Uh, 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 the Book of the Mormon is not the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, you must believe the word of God. The scripture said, it says every word of God is pure. Jesus Christ is the word of God. John said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. Unless you have Jesus in your life, you do not have the word of God. You can read great books. You can read books by John Milton. You can read books by uh, the great writers. But unless you receive the Bible, the word of God, the 66 books from Genesis to Revelation and believe them with all your heart, there's no salvation, ladies and gentlemen. There's no salvation. You can be a, a graduate of Harvard University. You can go to MIT. You can go to the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, 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 no reflection on you, West Carter guy. I know you're a graduate of West of Pennsylvania, but I know you're saved also. Stay saved. You can go to the best universities, Stanford, the best universities in the, the nation, in the world. You can go to the University of Oxford. You can go to the University of Sorbonne in Paris. You can go to the great universities in Moscow. But unless you believe in Jesus Christ, unless you're taught by the Holy Spirit, unless you receive the word of God, all your education will amount to nothing. It will only lead you into hell and destruction and eternal death. That is why we preach the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. We preach the gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, 
Go ye into all the world and preach this gospel. He said, but time out before you run off to ministry. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. And this is the crux of our, our message today. Jesus said, before you dash off to ministry and teach this and teach that and do this and do that, because Jesus knew how eager they were to go and tell the world about Jesus. And Jesus knows how eager you are, are and how sincere you are, Tammy Nichols, to tell people about Jesus. Jesus said, he said to them just before he ascended into heaven, he said, wait on the promise. Wait on the promise. It is written. It is written in Acts chapter 1, 4 and 5. He says, don't dash off to ministry, but wait for the promise. When you get the promise, you will receive power. You will receive power. Acts 1 verse 8, and you shall receive power after which the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be disciples, witnesses uh, for me in Jerusalem and Samaria and into the uttermost parts of of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus knows how much you want to witness for him. He knows how much you want the world to get saved. He knows how much you want your family get to get saved. But he also knows that in order for you to witness to them, in order for you, ladies and gentlemen, to get the message across, because Satan's coming after you. When Satan knows you have an assignment, when he knows you've been called by God, when he knows that you have gotten your marching orders, Satan is going to unleash everything he's got to try to dissuade you, to frustrate frustrate you, to get you to leave. That is why so many people, ladies and gentlemen, have left the church. They are frustrated. They're not getting fed in the churches. They don't know how to deal with the devil. A lot of pastors don't know how to deal with the devil. They don't believe in the Holy Ghost baptism, and then they can't teach others. They cannot empower the church, but God wants a powerful church, ladies and gentlemen. He does not want his church laying around like dry bones with no power, with no life in him. So he told his disciples before he ascended into heaven, he had told them, he had given them their orders. He said, go ye into all the world and preach this gospel. That's our assignment, ladies and gentlemen. Go into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell the world that God loves them. God does not want to destroy them. Jesus Christ has died for their sins. He rose again from the dead and Christ is in us. He wants to be in us. But ladies and gentlemen, we have seen many go without the Holy Ghost. Even Charles Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, he tried to go without the Holy Ghost and got his butt kicked in the American colonies. He got whooped. The devil beat up on him. And so Charles Wesley got back on the ship and went back to England, he and his brother John, and went and they went to a place <coughs> called Aldersgate in England. And there somebody taught Charles Wesley about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You Methodists need to listen to this. You AMEs need to listen to this. You CMEs need to listen to this. You need to start teaching the people that they need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You bishops need to start teaching the people what God has said. Wait on the power. You can't do it because you have great conferences. You can't do it because you have people who can put together good meetings. You can't do it because you got big name people and you use their expertise. You can't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, people can't bring the power that God wants. The Holy Ghost must bring the power. If you're going to be a successful denomination, if you're going to be a successful Christian, if you're going to be a successful, a successful husband, if you're going to be a successful uh, a worker, if you're going to be a successful person, if you're going to be successful in doing the will of God, if you're going to take this gospel to your neighborhood, to the state legislature, to the White House, to the nations of the world, then you must be equipped. You and I must be equipped. God knows our desire. He knows how eager we are. And God has seen people run and get their butts kicked because they're running on their own energy. They're running on their own credentials. They get a degree from uh, the seminary and they start running. They start a church and, and they've got a seminary degree and they've got people supporting them. But before long, they burn out, ladies and gentlemen. They burn out. 
your seminary degree, your Bible school degree, come on, somebody, is not going to help you. It, ladies and gentlemen, you can have the best singers in the world, the best praise dancers in the world. You can have a praise team. You can have the best ushers in the world. You can have the prettiest people in the world sitting up on the front row. But those things do not attract and hold people. God wants something that's going to attract you to him and hold you. Satan knows every trick in the book. He knows what bell to ring, what rope to tug, what chain to yank on to separate people from God. He knows what temptations will bring that preacher down. He knows what temptations will bring you down. But you need somebody. Come on now, listen to me. You need somebody who's going to live inside of you and guide you and direct you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, so many churches, so many preachers have uh, uh, embarrassed the Holy Ghost, have grieved the Holy Spirit. I, I grew up with hearing people talking negatively about the Holy Ghost. I repent for any time ever participating in blasphemy. I, I repent for every time I've listened to their ignorance. Ladies and gentlemen, I went to seminary with men and women who did not believe in the Holy Ghost. My seminary did not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But one Sunday morning, ladies and gentlemen, in my junior year in seminary, I was like a dry bone. I got sick and sick and tired of being dry and dead. I was getting teaching in the seminary, but I was not seeing what I needed. I was hearing uh, people preaching, but those sermons did not have power. I was listening to pa uh, pastors and guest pastors and professors teach some were trying to preach but it wasn't getting me to where i needed to be i was hungry ladies and gentlemen i was starving i was about to crash dive ladies and gentlemen i said no this religion this this is religion there must be more to this i said god you spoke to me i remember when you called me you changed my life with a miracle and then you told me to quit my job and enroll in seminary i put my family and our, our, our well-being online because I trusted God. I said, God, now I'm in this dead seminary with all these preachers. Many of them have large churches. They have great followings, but they don't have any power. I said, Lord, I need some power. I need some power. I need you to, I need you, Lord, to make yourself real to me. I've committed my life to you and I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do, but I need you to be real, God. I need, I need something. I didn't even, lady, hey, Tammy Nichols, I didn't even know what I needed, but I need something. And ladies and gentlemen, some of you are listening. Some of you are listening to the tape. Some of you are going to listen to this series on my YouTube channel, Leroy Carter. Uh, you're going to listen. You're going to say, hey, that sounds like me. I'm, I've been here and there. I've been in all kinds of churches. I've been in all kinds of in all kinds of seminars and meetings and conferences, and I need something. And ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to me, and you know that you know that you know that you need something more than what you're getting. I'm not putting down the brick and mortar church. I'm not putting down pastors. I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, I'm giving you a, you a personal testimony of where I was. And so one Sunday morning, the Lord said to me, I don't want you going to your church. I was going to a great church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Had a great pastor. He was not spirit filled. He was a great preacher. And he, I still consider him my pastor, one of my best friends. And and uh, uh, Lord said, no, I don't want you to go there. They had some great choirs, some of the best choirs in Philadelphia. The best, one of the best Sunday schools, great teachers. But the spirit was not there, the power. I mean, people were coming in sick and leaving sick. I saw one day a, a woman, a little tiny woman, weighed about 110 pounds, pick up my pastor. He weighed about 275. Picked him up and threw him across the pulpit. That demon in her threw that pastor across the pulpit. I said, Lord, I need something more than this. I, I don't want, you know, I don't want any demon throwing me. You say we should have power over demons, and I don't see any power. And God told me one day, I want you to go to this church. He told me what church to go to. 
He said, I want you to go to your friend's church. He was a seminary classmate. He was a Pentecostal. He was a, the only Pentecostal in our seminary. And everybody laughed at him because he would talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and laying hands on the sick and casting out demons. But everybody would laugh at him. Professors would even laugh at him. I even laughed at him. But Lord said, I want you to go to that church. That's where you go this Sunday. And I went there by myself, left my family at home. <clears throat> and I obeyed God. And I went there. And when the pastor saw me, he smiled. I sat down. And at a certain point, the pastor said, I'm going to have a prayer line. He said, I'm going to pray for those of you who have a need. Whatever that need is for healing, for deliverance, or well, some of you might want the, to receive the Holy Ghost, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to have a prayer line. Ladies and gentlemen, I got in the back, the rear. Hey, Tammy, I got in the back of the prayer line. I was the last one. And he was laying hands on people, he and his staff. And when I got up front, he said, why are you here? I said, the Lord told me to come here. I started crying. I said, I am so dry. I have a need. God's called me to minister the gospel. I'm going to a great church, but I don't have what I need. I need something. I don't even know what I need. And the pastor smiled. And he said, I'm going to lay my hands on you. And you're going to receive, I want you to receive by faith the Holy Ghost baptism. He said, when I lay my hands on you, he said, receive by faith. Don't try to figure it out. Just receive, just receive, just like when you receive Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost. I said, yes. And when he laid hands on me, ladies and gentlemen, just, I felt a warmth a warm feeling come over me and I felt chains break in my life and I just felt myself lifting up my hands and saying hallelujah praise God thank you Jesus and then the rest of the story they told me that for the rest of that service for the next 45 minutes people in that church were dancing and praising God and worshiping God and honoring God and magnifying the Lord and others received the baptism of the Holy Ghost at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, it was just a hallelujah, praise, worship God. I mean, I just, all I knew, well, I was just worshiping God, worshiping God, like I was in the throne room, room of heaven with God. And when I left that place, I was never the same. And that was 1976, ladies and gentlemen. That was 42 years ago and i can remember that experience just as vividly and the anointing is still on me hallelujah the anointing of god is still on me and 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 i've been able to teach others about the holy ghost and they have received my faith and and i tell them i can't give you anything but i can teach you what the scripture says ladies and gentlemen god filled me with the holy ghost I mean, I have never been the same. I can't tell you I haven't sinned since then. Yes, I've sinned. I've strayed from God. I've done this. But God's always brought me back. He's brought back to my remembrance that I've been purchased with a price. And, and the very fact that Jesus made this promise, he told his disciples, wait in Jerusalem. He said, I know you're eager to go out and do ministry. And I was eager to go out and do ministry. But wait for the promise. Wait for the power. I believe I'm talking to somebody today. I believe God has a calling on you and you're struggling. You're, you're bona fide. You're legit. You're too legit to quit. You love God. You love the people. You're trying to make that ministry work and Satan's been coming against you. People have been ridiculing you. It's like you just can't get the ministry off the ground. Jesus told his disciples, Wait 
for the promise. What he was saying is because if you go out there with the without the power, without the leadership of the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit indwelling you, oh, you'll be successful for a while. But Satan will get your number and he will know how to shut you down. Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen a lot of great, powerful preachers get shut down. I've seen a lot of them, them deny the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. I've seen a lot of them talk neg negatively and deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've even had preachers tell me, I don't want that mess. I don't want speaking in tongues. Well, speaking in tongues is not all about the Holy Spirit. Speaking in, tongue, speaking in tongues is one manifestation. But you've got to read, you've got to read uh, what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter four, 14 about the gifts of the Spirit. Read about the gift of prophecy, helps, administration. Read that you can, you can lay hands on the sick. You can cast out demonic spirits. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, joy. read about the fruits of the Spirit. It's more than speaking in tongues. Read about the fruits of the Spirit. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then joy begins to grow in you. Peace, love, happiness, meekness, self-control. Some of you have habits you can't break. Get baptized in the Holy Spirit and watch that habit disappear. Some of you have sickness in your body, disease in your body. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Get the antibodies that your body needs to fight against that disease. The Holy Ghost is the greatest antibody there is, an antibiotic. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, you're sad and can't find joy and happiness. Receive the Holy Ghost. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. You may say, well, I, every believer is filled with the Holy Spirit. No, no, all contrary. You see, when you receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. The moment we confess Jesus as our Savior and Lord, we are baptized into the body of Christ. Remember when John was baptizing people for the remission of sins? He saw Jesus. He said, behold, the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And he's going he's gonna to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. John told the people, I'm baptizing you because you're confessing your sins. I'm baptizing you so that at some point your sins will be removed. He said, here's the lamb of the world who's going to take away your sins. And, and so when you receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, Jesus, the lamb of God, takes away your sins. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. You become accepted in the beloved. God accepts you in his body and he will not, he will not deny you. He will not cast you out. He receives you as a member of the real church. You become a member of the real church of God. But then, and when you receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit enters into everyone. The Holy Spirit enters into every believer. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone who has confessed Jesus as Savior and Lord has the Holy Spirit residing on the inside. But Jesus stretched his disciples and he's stretching us. He said, now, before you go out and minister, I want you to go into all the world in every nation. He said, but before you go, wait for the power. Wait for the promise. Jesus was saying to you, I know the spirit of God is in you. Because Jesus has spoken to them, receive the Holy Spirit. I know the Spirit of God is in you, but you must be filled. So wait for the promise. I promise you, you'll be filled. And so 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, on the day of Pentecost, 
According to Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, God poured out the Holy Spirit on the church. And Jesus, who was in heaven, baptized the church with the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And evidence, a witness to all the nations that were assembled in Jerusalem was that these unlearned, uneducated men began speaking in other tongues, other languages, languages that uh, the disciples didn't even understand, but they began speaking in strange languages. Ladies and gentlemen, we see in the book of Acts that as they went forth preaching and ministering, they had the power to lay hands on the sick and the sick would recover. Even people were being healed when Peter's shadow passed over them. The Holy Ghost was in Peter's shadow. And when Peter and, 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 and John were, were thrown into prison and God opened the prison by miraculous power, the church praised God and worshiped God and the church got baptized again with the Holy Ghost. See, God wants to fill you again and again and again for the mission he's called you on. And your job, if you will accept the mission, Mr. Phelps, is to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And when you're drained, when you're tired, you ask God to fill you again and fill you again. And in whatever situation you encounter, have the confidence, Facebook family, are you listening? Have the confidence that greater is he in you than he that's in the world. There is no situation that God cannot handle. But in order for you to be successful, ladies and gentlemen, you must die to self. You must die to pride. You must realize I cannot do this. But greater is he in me than he that's in the world. You must yield, surrender your life to the Holy Spirit. The reason why many ministries are unsuccessful, they have not yielded to the Holy Spirit. Many have not received the Holy Spirit. The reason why many pastors have been unsuccessful, many believers have been defeated because they have not yielded to the Holy Spirit. They have not acknowledged and recognized the great promise of Jesus and have not received that promise. Ladies and gentlemen, I beg you today to ask God for the promise and receive the Holy Spirit. You may say, well, I don't want to pray in tongues. Hey, God's not going to force you to pray in tongues. But I tell you one thing, if you don't pray in tongues, you're going to miss out on something. Because I tell you, when sickness comes upon my body and troubles come and, and Satan tries to grip me with fear or he might wake me up in the middle of the night with a panic attack. And, and, and a lot of people go under. Some people have heart attacks under those situations. Uh, Satan will try to oppress you, oppress your family. When you see your, your uh, uh, spouse about to die or your children about to cave in and, and, and you don't know what to do. Well, I learned a long time ago to activate the Holy Spirit in me. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no greater gift than praying in tongues in the time of trouble. You want to get the devil to flee from you, flee from your family, leave your family alone, quit messing with you on your job. You find your quiet place and you go and you listen to the and your Holy Spirit rise up in me. And then you hear those sounds coming out of your body. You hear those sounds within you. Those sounds you've been trying to run from, those strange sounds, that strange language. And then you begin speaking that language you hear on the inside. It sounds so different. It sounds so strange. You say, wow, what is that? Where did that come from? That's the Holy Ghost talking in you. And he's praying unto God for you. He's praying unto God to arrest that situation that has come against you. He's praying unto God to heal that situation that has attacked you. 
And when you yield to the Holy Spirit and you get in agreement and in partnership with the Holy Spirit who lives in you and you begin praying that to God, you begin praying what you hear, the Holy Ghost praying inside of you and you start. And then when you lose yourself in it and yield to the Holy Spirit and just praise him, then you get to a place, you'll get to a place where you'll start singing in tongues. You'll start singing a song. You won't know what you're singing to the Lord, but you can stop and ask him, Lord, what was I singing? What was the Holy Ghost singing unto you? And God will give you interpretation. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan hates it when people get baptized in the Holy Ghost. He can't control it. He can't hinder your prayers. He can't block you. You've got to get your healing. You've got to get your deliverance. But first, receive the Holy Spirit. Push beyond fear. Read the scripture. Read the scriptures on the Holy Ghost baptism. Read the scripture. If you want more help, contact me, email me, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. I'll send you some scriptures. I'll pray with you. I'll even uh, 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 guide you. I've had people, uh, taught people how to guide people into receiving the Holy Ghost baptism. I can't give it to you, but I can guide you into receiving. And Lord, praise God, people, we've had people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost on telephone, online, in person. And ladies and gentlemen, you talking about a powerful army being raised up by the Lord, filled with the fuel and the power and the energy that God requires and wants us to have. And we're no longer walking in our own power, our own strength. We're not burning out. We're not burning ourselves up. We're not frustrating ourselves, but we're operating in the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what Jesus told his disciples. Before you go out ministering, you wait for the promise. I'm going to send you the promise, and he will guide you into all truth and let him take the lead, and you can take nations. You can take kim kingdoms. You can take jobs. You can take households. You can take marriages for Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, seek God. Ask God. Don't debate. Now, some of you are going to go and test this with some other preacher. And you might, you'll get some preachers who will preach against what I just preached. But I want you to believe the word of God. The scripture says you shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost has come. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And then when people come to you say, oh, well, that was for Old Testament day. New, I mean, the first century church. You tell them, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Jesus intends that for the church of the day. And when the church of the day believes Jesus and repents of their sin and get back in line with Jesus Christ and ask God for the Holy Ghost baptism. Wow. Wow. You talking about a change? You talking about a change in America, a change in Canada, a change in Mexico, a change in Guatemala, a change in England, a change in France? You talking about a change in North and South Korea? You talking about a change in China and Russia? You talking about a change in Israel? You talking about a change in Africa, and Asia, and the 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 uh, continents and the nations? But it begins with you believing and you receiving the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is waiting on you today. Why don't you ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you? I'm going to close out today. We're going to continue this next week. What happens after you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost? But you just practice what you've learned today. Give me a call. Send me an email. And let's pray together. Let's get the church filled. Let's get the church filled with the power God intends us to have. Amen. So we'll stop making Christ ashamed and, and belittling him. And let's be people of power, life changers, world changers, earth movers. This is Pastor Leroy Carter signing off 
Thank you. Thank you for listening. Father, bless the people. Bless the people. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to review this lesson, look, it'll be on my YouTube channel, Leroy Carter, in about two more hours. God bless you. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great day.